Hey guys, Shabear1000 here. Today we're going to be putting a serpentine belt on this 96 Ford F-150 half ton. Stick around, I'll show you how to do it. It's fairly easy. Okay guys, in one of my last videos, um, no, must be down on the bottom, but this belt I showed where it was um, it was shredding there. You can see it right down in there, right there. And uh, so her dad got a belt, and that's it right there. This is the number. Now this is a 5.0. It's a 5 liter, which is technically a 302, um, small block. So there's the numbers, in case you need them. This is from Bando. He ordered this online. He probably ordered it because he got it cheaper. Because those, those belts, uh, that one there is like 30 bucks. So I figure he probably got it about half price. But um, what we're going to do, all it in involves is taking this pulley. And you get a... You get a wrench that'll fit that that bolt right there and you pull it like this way or pull it up whichever way you can get on now they make tools for this but this one I don't need that tool for um, and what that'll do is loosen that now what you're going to want to do if you have to take picture take a picture uh, videotape it whatever because these can get pretty uh pretty confusing now right here along your the front above your radiator this is your radiator support here your cross member there should be a sticker on here now this one as you can see is kind of worn off so if you have that issue make sure you take pictures or take a video so you can get it put on there right so let me go get the tool I need I'm just going to put a long wrench on it and maybe something to stand on and I'll be right back with you hang on guys alright guys so we're just gonna put this on here this is a 15 millimeter like I said they make a tool it's a long tool that comes way up in here so I'm just gonna push that down just enough to release the tension on that belt now be careful because that spring loaded is tight so if you just let go of it you're going to fly up and do all kinds of stuff and probably hurt yourself so now we're going to take this off and then i'll show you this belt Once I get it off of here, there we go. Maybe not. Okay. Now, here's the belt. Let me back you out here. And it's a lot worse than it was before. And we haven't drove the truck. I just drove down in the street and back, what, twice? Okay, so. And. I'll focus. See them cracks in there? That's not good. See that? It's just heat. They dry crack, just like tires do down here. A lot of times, most of the time down here, your tires don't wear out. They just pretty much get dry cracked. So what we're going to do. So we're going to take this, see this belt here, see, no cracks. So we're just going to hold them up here, or lay them down if you want, you can lay them on the ground. I'm just going to hold them up, just like this. See, grab them like that 
and grab it like that and there you go all right just like that make sure they're the same length make sure make sure they're the same width which they are count your ribs right here one two three four five six so we should have six ribs one two three four five six all right so we're good to go now a lot of times sometimes you know you might still be able to read the numbers on these belts but this one you can't because uh, you might well maybe you might be able to get a number off of that and cross reference it right there okay so there's that now I gotta get this put back on here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna set you back over here sorry guys then I'll bring you around and show you how to tighten that belt well, you don't actually have to tighten it. It kind of does it itself. And I'll tell you something else about these pulleys. A good indication of how this belt can, how this belt, your belt is going to go on. Okay. So we need to get it around the bottom pulley first. You always want to start at the bottom, which I'm going to have to lay down because I can't reach that guy real well. So we're on there. Now I'm going to pull the belt up. Around. It goes over top of the water pump on this one. The water pump pulley. Then it goes around the power steering pump. Then it goes around the air conditioner. The air conditioning pump. back down under I think it came off the bottom pulley it did okay good we're in good shape now now when you got your belt off wiggle your pulleys especially your water pump where your, your fan hooks on on this one wiggle your fan back and forth make sure these pulleys are in good shape there's a little bit of play in these, uh, but I'll see if he wants to, uh, I'll see if he wants to replace them at a later date, because they're not real bad yet, but there is a little more play than what I would like to see, but, okay. so now, I gotta get my wrench. Can you guys see okay in there? Get back down there on that bottom. Not bottom, but. Alright, I found something to stand on. I'm gonna take this wrench and I'm gonna put it in there like that. And it gives you a lot more leverage. Just make sure it doesn't slip off on you. Okay, it's weird.
Okay, I see. I'm not all the way in my ribs back there in the back, so that makes a big difference. There we go. All right. Make sure we get that on. All right. Now, I'll show you about these pulleys. See down there, that pulley down there? See how it's got ribs? It's got the lines in it. Same way with this one. It's got the lines in it. So does this one. So does the smog pump. And so does the crank pulley down here on the bottom. See those? Come on, focus. Focus. Anyway, see those those lines? Now, if you notice, these are called idler pulleys because they don't do anything. All right. So, if you notice, there's no there's no lines in either one of these. Usually, what that means is that's where the back the back part of the belt rides on both of them. So that's usually what that means. Okay. So. That's a good indicator of also if, if you forget how it goes, just remember that. These idler pulleys, the back belt, the back of the belt will run on the smooth side of the pulley. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this starter. I don't want to start it. I just want to bump it. So that way, if it comes off, it's not going to come flying off, you know, at a thousand RPMs. Alright, now let's go see and make sure everything's in track where it should be. Yep, everything looks like it's tracking good. All the pulleys, the belts are on. So let's go ahead and let's start this thing up. Okay, sorry about that. I bumped the record button when I get opening the doors. Let's try it here. So she's running. She's charging. Um, she's got good oil pressure. We're good to go. Alright, let's go out here and make sure everything's spinning nice and good like it should. Nice and smooth. Okay, good to go. Let's go ahead and shut her down now. Hit it again just to make sure. There we go. Good to go, guys. He's good to go. The next thing we're going to do, I got to get some bolts, but we're going to put the, he bought, he didn't buy just the motor, he bought the whole window regulator. So we're going to put a window regulator in this. I don't think I've got the right bolts, but we'll see. And uh, there you go. That's how you do that. It's fairly easy, fairly simple. And like I said, sometimes you may have to, you know, put your wrench on there like that. And make it longer to give you more leverage. Unless you got one of them tools. Uh, them, them tools you can get the whole thing online for 30 or 40 bucks. If you do a lot of this stuff. But just to do it once. You can rent that tool. What you do is you buy it. They, they call it borrowing. What you do is you buy it. And you use it. And you take it back within the allotted amount of time. Whatever they give you. And uh, it's usually a couple days. But you take it back and you get your money back, tax and everything. The reason why they charge you is that way if the tool don't come back, it's yours. You just bought it. So, um, But if I'm going to buy a tool, you know, I always make sure I take that stuff back. If it's not something I'm going to use a lot of, um, 
I make sure I take it back because if I'm going to buy the damn thing, I, I don't want one that's been used a hundred times. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you can get that tool, 30, 40 bucks, whatever. But online, you can get them anywhere between 20 and 30 and you get, it'll do almost any kind of car you want. Any, Because these, these are all different, you know. Um, but that's how you do that. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped somebody. And I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. I appreciate everything. So, thanks for watching, guys. And Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.